Welcome to another Creating Kindness Design Team video hop. I'm Jenny Hall. Thanks for joining me for another card making tutorial. Today I'm creating a landscape card along with the rest of the team members in the video hop. Be sure to check the video link in the top line of the description to get to the next person in the video hop. I'm going to be using some distress inks and a stamp set on watercolor paper to create a very easy to duplicate landscape watercolor scene. The stamp set I'm using is from Altenu, and these are the distress inks that I'm using. I'm working on the Waffle Flower Water Media Mat as my palette and my workspace. I've placed the image in the Misty, this is a mini Misty stamp positioner, to where half of the tree does not stamp onto the paper. That way it will kind of look a little bit more like a landscape that will be an afternoon, hazy, sunny day. It reminds me of summertime. So I'm going to do the color layering technique and add some distress colors on top of one another. I've started off with Walnut Stain as the brown and I've stamped up the tree trunk and a little bit of the branches that are inside the top part of the tree. Using a water brush filled with tap water, I've moved along those stamp lines and you could see that distress inks on watercolor paper react very quickly and just move around like a dream. So I'm adding several other different greens and a yellow. All of the products I'm using are listed in the video description with a link you can click to get more information about that product. Adding in the color is just as simple as adding it down to the actual paper in the area that I want. Questions that I have about creating a landscape without having a go by or you know something as an example is people are not sure exactly where to place the colors. So as you can see here, I don't have a special formula. I'm just adding contours and however it comes out is what the landscape is going to look like. I do know that I want to have some darker colors back in the far left part of the ground so that it will tie into the leaves that are on the tree. And now I'm creating a shadow on the grass of where the sun would come from behind the tree and make a shadow on the ground. Creating the shadow covers two different things for me. Number one, it's a very dark area that doesn't have to be filled up with color to make it look natural and that's kind of like a cheat but it's also you there would be a shadow there so that's a that's an easy way to to you fill in the space and not have to come up with something for the sky I wanted this to look like a, it had colors in the sky so I'm using the purple pink and blue inks together first added the purple to make it look like there were some streaking cloud colors then I added the pink right next to it, overlapping it a little bit into the purple, and then everything else is filled in with blue. I want to add more color into the tree since it has dried now, so I'm using more of that Distress Ink and Walnut Stain to go back and add the color onto the tree trunk as intense as I'd like it to be. So you can go back and add more layers and more layers Allow it to dry in between and that will get the best results. I'm adding more of that spun sugar, which is the pink color, down to the bottom of where the tree horizon meets. And that's going to kind of give me a natural look. And then tiny little bitty streaks of purple will give the emulation of some clouds. Very easy, no special process. This is just adding things and it, it just comes out looking great to me in my eye. So I'm adding some flick marks as this is going to be a summer afternoon. There would be lots of atmosphere in the air. And now I'm going to intensify some of those greens by adding a little bit of the dark green, which is mowed lawn, and then follow it up with some of the gray, and that's weathered wood. Adding the gray into the dark green is going to intensify that green color. 
Now I've added a little bit of white acrylic paint to a block and watered it down and that gives me the white flick marks and I'll dry that. Now clean up on my water media mat. It's easy with a microfiber cloth and some water. Super, super easy. I'm mounting this watercolor panel on another piece of white cardstock to kind of give it the stability right now. It wanted to warp a little bit. You may be wondering why I kept it in the misty for so long and that's because the misty is what was holding my piece down from warping. I do that sometimes and I made this project really late at night. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope that you go over to my blog and get the free PDF tutorial. I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching the video. Have a good day.